Okay, nerds, I wanna show you a really great website that I love for coding. Um, you can build programs for games or art or scenes. There's amazing stuff you can do in this one and it's called Scratch and you can get to it at scratch.mit.edu. And I love this one for grades three and up. And I do mean up. So if you even are a pretty good programmer already, Scratch is really powerful and you can do some amazing, amazing, amazing things. So definitely check it out. Um, also, if you have any other coding experience like code.org or Sphero programming, you're going to pick this up really fast. So I like Scratch because it's free and it will always be free forever. Um, MIT made it and it's been around for years. So it's a free and always free program. So there's a lot to show you. Um, too much for me to really cover in this short video, but I just want to get you started. So in Scratch, you can see that I'm already lo logged in as nerding. And um, even if you're not logged in, you can even still click create and start building a game or a program right away. And then you can make it an account later. It's just harder to save. So make an account with your parents um, and then get going. So I'm gonna click create and go into a, a brand new project. And when you first log in for the very first time, you're gonna actually have a tutorial kind of sitting right here in the middle. And that's important anyway. So I'm gonna show you where those are right up here at the top tutorials. And they're fantastic. They will walk you through a whole bunch of different things you can build. And the getting started one is, is the one that's gonna be sitting here right when you open. So definitely check that out. That's got a little video and then is gonna show you how to start um, building scripts and making code. So definitely check that out. And then when you're done, go back in here and take a look at all of these. You can build a Pong game, a flying game, cool stuff. All right, let's go back. All right, so over here on the side, you'll see all of your coding blocks and we're gonna work with those in just a second. This is your workspace where you're going to be building your scripts. Over here is your kind of preview window of what you're building and you can do all your testing right here. Down here is your sprites and those are your characters. And then over here is your backdrops um, or the background of your stage. So let's go ahead and grab a couple of new sprites. I'm going to trash the little cat, which is adorable, but I want my favorite ones, which are the cheesy puffs. And, oops, clicked on the wrong one. The cheesy puffs. And I want, I want a puppy. So I'm gonna go up here to animals. I'm gonna grab a puppy. Um, they're adorable. Okay, they need a background. So let's grab a new backdrop right here. Choose a backdrop. And I want our puppy and cheesy puffs to be over here on the moon. As you can see, there's a bunch of categories, so always look through those to get what you want. So I've got my little puppy right here. I've got my cheese puffs on the moon. And let's go ahead and start building a quick script for them. So right now I have my cheesy puffs selected. So any code I write in here is going to be to control our cheesy puffs. I don't wanna move our cheesy puffs right now, so I'm gonna click on the puppy and now the puppy, and you can see also a preview right here. So when you write your code, any code we put in here is actually gonna be for the puppy. Let me just show you that one more time. If I'm on Cheesy Puffs, see the Cheesy Puffs right here, and it's selected here, that's how I know which one I'm writing code for. So I'm gonna click on the puppy, and let's go ahead and make the puppy move. So all the blue blocks right in here, and if you scroll, there's gonna be more. All the blue ones are motion blocks, so those are going to make your puppy or whatever it is you're controlling move in some way. So let's just grab a basic one, a move 10 steps. If I wanna just run this code real quick, I can just click on it and it moved my puppy 10 steps. Okay, I wanna trash this piece of code because I don't, don't actually want it, so I'm gonna grab it. I'm just gonna dump it back over in here and it will get recycled into another piece of code. <laughs> okay, so that's our motion blocks. Let's instead grab a, this one's fun, it's a glide to a random position. So glide for one second to a random position. I'm gonna click on that. So you see how my puppy gl was gliding to a random position? That's kind of fun, so I'm gonna leave that one in there. Okay, the purple blocks are looks blocks, and that's gonna change how your puppy looks. So definitely take a look through all of these and see what they do. I think I want to do change size by 10 because that's a positive number it will make my puppy grow 
if you made a negative number in there, it would make your puppy shrink. So let's go ahead and click on our code to run it again. So what our code is now saying is to glide one second to a random position and then change your size by 10. Oh, did you see him get bigger? Awesome, okay. All right, so let's jump to sound blocks. Sound blocks are fun, but sometimes they're annoying when you're trying to do a tutorial. So I'm gonna skip those right now. So definitely you should check those out at home. And then let's go to the yellow blocks. These are really important. These are events blocks. Do you see how they're a little bit of a different shape than our other blocks? These are always, these almost always, almost always, go at the start of your code and they are what, um, they're, they are what starts your, triggers the start of your code. So um, let's grab this one that says, when this sprite is clicked, and do you see how this little uh, puzzle piece can only fit at the top. So when this sprite is clicked, glide one second to a random position and change, si change size by 10. So now my puppy, every time I click on him, will move to a random position and change his size by 10. And he keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And he's adorable. Okay, so let's take a look at our next set of blocks. Orange blocks are control blocks. And these are kind of when you can really get into doing some cool stuff with your code. Um, specifically, there's wait blocks. If you need a pause for any point in your code, if you do not put one of these in, your code will just continue to run straight through. So sometimes these are really helpful. You need that. Um, repeat blocks. You can have parts of your code repeat however many times you want. Forever loop, and that's going to repeat forever. Um, actually, let me show you how that one works. So let's pull out this forever loop. So any code inside of this section is what's gonna repeat forever. So I'm gonna grab this part and I want, when I click on my puppy, I want actually forever it to be gliding around to a random position and then changing its size by 10. So let's see what that looks like. gliding around and he's growing. Okay, I'm gonna click stop on my code. All right, so that's pretty cool. Um, th these blocks in sensing operators and variables are so cool. Even my blocks, which is making your own things. These are more advanced though. So if you're already pretty good at coding, definitely jump in here um, and t check those out. They're really fun, but they are more advanced blocks. So if you're new to coding, probably stay up in motion, looks, sound, events, and control, and there's a lot still that you can do within just these few blocks. Once you are really getting good at some of these basic blocks, you can start doing more complex, more intricate games, and there's just tons of options for that. So I'm gonna jump over here really quick to another game I made. This one's called Mom Catch, and that really is my mom, and these are all of her children falling from the sky, and she has to run around and try to catch them, and she can get points. So on anyone else's game, too, you can click See Inside, and you can see the code that that person wrote um, to build their game. So this is the code that's on my mom character and then the kids have their own code as they are falling from the sky. So as you learn more, you can do really awesome things um, and make sure you're looking at other people's code to see how they did something and learn from their, from their code and how they did stuff. So um, today though, I want you to mainly stay up here probably in tutorials if you're new to Scratch, go through some of these, maybe take a look at some other people's code and build your own awesome stuff. I can't wait to see what you've made.